Good morning and welcome back to another learning video. Today we're doing some exciting things. We, you know, we, we took in a bunch of analyses and I got a lot of feedback on some of the SBA prep from the data set that we were doing. But you know, we need to really think about, so a lot of times when we do analyses, and I wanted to make a short learning video, is how to really display the data. And some of the feedback I've gotten in some of the sample visits, I wanted to comment on them. I want to talk about creating statistical bins or bins and grouping items. Remember that from the stats class? But the good thing is Tableau makes it kind of fun. And I personally remember doing a stat class and it was all manual, so it wasn't really fun. So it's not something I ever really wanted to cover. But um, I want to talk about that and dual access charts in Tableau. So like anything, we're going to talk about the type of data that you need to, to acquire this. Um, we're going to talk about creating dual access charts, creating statistical bins merging charts and bin type data into one display, which is pretty interesting because I think it, it can tell something. So using the same data that we've done with some of the, uh, the SBA data analysis series, also the, the data set is also in our relate videos. You can tell that in this video, what we're going to do is going to cover a chart, that, like I said, it's the way it sent me. And they did a really nice job with the chart. They, they put in for the SBA data, the approval year, you see the year going across the bottom, which is good. Then they put in the, um, they customized the actual row dimensions. Some results computed ones, they actually wrote what they are. So they did a very nice job of writing what they are on here. And I thought that this chart, looking at it, it said the two charts look very similar. So when you first combine the two charts into one by creating a dual access chart, you get the two charts and you can see that they do follow each other very closely. All right, well, that makes sense. It's shown on one chart, we have a nice little legend here for what that is and so that makes sense to me but then as you think about it if we're trying to do approval for the SBA and one of the missions for the SBA is to create jobs maybe we can see how these approvals went across statistical bins of groupings of jobs Did they create a lot of jobs they create a little bit of, of jobs so let's just it maybe it makes sense let's take a look at it and what we could do is like create jobs. You have to have a number field for this. And you hit the down arrow, you go create bins. Yep, I know it's painful because it's just that easy. So and what we might want to do, I create a couple of these, but we could label it properly. You see there's 130 max values, right, that we have there. And you can suggest bin size, and they see that all these bins are small, but I don't like to really create bins that are that big, especially when I'm doing visual displays. So I like to do something a little bit more friendly, maybe four, maybe five bins. And you basically just divide the 130 by the number of bins that you want. Maybe you want to do three bins with three point bins of 43 jobs at a time to see by groupings. I don't know. Maybe what we'll do is 130 divided by divided by four and 32.5 and we'll call it we'll call it bins of buckets of 33 bins of 33 I'm sure the last bin won't have that many in it size of bins 33 there we got our values create it you see it creates this member over here is bins now I have a member that I can actually do something with so if I look at this chart with with everything created, a number of loans approved, and everything in a stated mission of the SBA is to do something, now I can see what kind of jobs they create. I mean, we'll bucket it for me and look and see. So, mm, so you can see as I created my bins and I jumped up and put four bins in place. For some reason. It seems to be okay in this area, in this bin. Somewhat light in this bin, and somewhat kind of flat in this bin. But in a zero bin, we have to make sure we're doing this properly. But in a zero bin, it looks like where all the approvals were made, I didn't get a lot of jobs. Now, of course, we have to understand the data and really look into the data to see why that may or may not be the case. But if the goal is to get those jobs, then you may want to think about, you know, doing a policy to gain those jobs are we really generating the jobs based on these approvals and loans that are going out there? Is this really working or is there just a lot, a lot of individuals taking advantage of it? Um, 
of money and guaranteed loans and not get in. But perhaps it just the data doesn't relate and whatnot. But of course, anytime you show data, it brings up another good point. You're going to have to actually understand the relationship of that data and make sure it makes sense. Technically, creating the bin for th by buckets of 33 wasn't so bad, but at the end of the day, it didn't really, or it scares me that you know we did all these growth and we ended up with no jobs. Maybe that's correct, and we'll have to actually dive into the, the data to test that, and that's going to be an important thing. But I think it's a good idea to show these, to show some of the work that this fine group did, and you can see they customized some things here and those kind of things and tool tips and create custom tool tips and nice little data and they broke it up. So interesting, something to do. I think I hope this video helps show you how to create bins, do a bin type analysis and combine a dual access chart. Thank you and have a good day. Of course, we put anything in the comments you might want to have questions about with these kind of methods, whether it makes sense or not, we're going to dive into this data. And you know, don't forget to subscribe to the learning channel if we are constantly creating great videos to support our Tableau users.